Welcome back everyone. So this week we're going to talk about brazing and we're going to try to braise some pieces of lamp. And I know the brazing technique is something that some people are a bit kind of scared or don't really understand. So we're going to cover this and we're going to make a simple recipe using a very simple ingredients, some stock. And with the technique, we're also going to learn how to use some new types of wine. So instead of the typical red wine, we're going to use port. Okay, and this is a simple way to really improve that sauce that we're going to be making. Eh? Because when you braise, you cook the meat and you yield a beautiful sauce with it. So what we're going to have at the end? Lamb shanks with a nice port sauce. How is that? <laughs> So let's have a look at the ingredients. I talked about the lamb shanks. I went to my butcher and I think he only had this, which I think they're called hind or hind shanks, something like this. You see, there's much more meat on there, but you can cook them and braise them the same way as typical lamb shank. You can also use anything you want. But for the braising technique, as you can see, you don't need much. I've got the meat and we've got the port, we've got the stock. And look at the other ingredients. A little bit of rosemary, some shallots, some garlic, a bay leaf onions and carrots, a bit of salt and pepper, and you are done. All right, so that's all the ingredients. you find all the list of details ingredients in the video description. Now, let's go on the stove, and we're going to start by, of course, coloring the meat, and we're going to be talking about what type of cooking technique is braising. So here we are. So what exactly is braising? It is called a combination cooking technique. And the reason for that, it used two types of cooking. So first, we're going to saute, and we're going to sear, then brown the meat in the pan on a dry heat with a bit of oil. Okay, so that's the first uh, cooking method. And then after that, we're going to pour some liquid and cook this in the oven. So it's going to be kind of poaching after that in a liquid. So it starts with a saute and finish with a poaching. That's why it's called a combination cooking method. But it's nothing difficult. So the first thing we're going to do I'm taking a cast iron pot here, a bit of oil, but a tablespoon. I've added salt and pepper on my meat, a little bit of oil as well. And we're going to start browning our meat uh, bit by bit on all sides. All right, so I'm using a medium heat. Uh, you don't need to uh, do it too high. And all what we're going to do, you can do one by one. I'm going to start from the bottom here. Yeah. And I'm going to wait until I've got a nice brown coloring. And then turn it over and do all the sides. Okay, so have a look at this. And this is what we're trying to get here. So you see that browning? We want this all over. And there's two reasons for this. Why are we doing this? Because we're creating a layer of caramelized juices, the meat juices at the bottom of the pan, that in turn are going to improve your sauce. Okay? But it's also for the, the, good, the good looks when you're going to present your dish on the table, for instance. Uh, you've got these nice uh, layers of crusty brown meat, nicely seared. It is quite appetizing, so it's just two simple reasons, but it's not difficult in itself. Hold on. So as you can see, now everything's got a bit of coloration. It's hard to get all along. You can, if you want, you can press like this and down to have the color everywhere, but that's usually enough. And so we're going to reduce the heat slightly. I'm going to take this out and then we're going to saute the vegetables. All right, so as you can see here, plenty of juices. And we're going to put the carrots and the onions to start with. Now, if you don't have enough oil, uh, you can add a little bit of oil, and just a little bit, half a, half a spoon or something, should be enough. So remember, we're using a medium heat for this, so I've got a nice coloration, and immediately I'm putting everything in. I've got my shallots, my crushed garlic. I'm gonna mix the whole lot, and I'm gonna add a little bit of tomato paste. And we, we like to cook the tomato paste uh, to remove a bit of the acidity. So you can add like a good teaspoon in there. Okay, mix well. So look at that, very simple. Step one, we sear the meat. Step two, you've got your vegetables, some nice aroma, and then we're gonna deglaze, I'm gonna put my heat slightly higher, with not white wine or red wine, but port. You see? And that, the fact of using port, uh, transforms totally uh, the flavor profile of your, of your sauce. And you could use something else. Huh? So that's just one of the examples on how you can uh, make things different by using different types of spirits, uh, or alcohol, uh, fortified wine, are widely used in French cooking actually, but not many people use it all the time at home. Right, so it's boiling. 
Uh, and we're always boiling the alcohol uh, to remove some of the alcohol content. Uh, we're going to try that. And look at this. Oh, the port. Such a beautiful. It's sweet, you know, it's like a wine, but it's, got, it's very round. It's, there's all this sweetness in there. And I can already feel the, the rosemary. Rosemary is amazing how fragrant, fragrant it is. So, all right, very simple. So we see we're almost done. What we're going to do here, I'm just going to reduce my heat a little bit. I'm going to put my meat in here. And we're just going to cover with stock. And now for the stock. So the stock basically, and there's, I'm using like half a, half a liter. But what you want, uh, that's why I put that view from above. You want to kind of like this barely cover your meat. And uh, this is the thing about braising. Braising, it's not like making a ragu. The meat is not fully submerged in the liquid. And it's going to cook for quite some time. So by using about, you see, about half a liter here with, with my port, I kind of reach that, that height, which is really comfortable. And that's it. Pretty much what we've done here. And that's the first stage. We are basically done. All that needs to happen now is to cook this in the oven. So let's talk about the cooking time. And here we are. So we've done the first stage on the stove. We've browned the meat and we've got the vegetable base and the garnish and we have our sauce here. Beautiful color, semi syrupy. And the second stage is to cook this covered in the oven. Now, generally speaking, when it comes to lamb chains or this kind of meat, it is about two pounds. Uh, most people use about 160 degrees Celsius. Okay, I'll put the equivalent in Fahrenheit on the screen for three hours. Uh, braising is always a slow cooking process. But interestingly, if I'm referring to all the culinary reference in France, including culinary schools, even the modern one from today, the braising technique always refers to as 180 to 200 degrees Celsius in the pan uh, for two hours plus. Can be e even three hours. So which way to go? It's going to be up to you. You can use the 160. What I'm going to do for this video, I'm going to use actually 170 uh, to go in the middle uh, of all, uh, half culinary school, half what everybody's doing. And I'm going to aim for three hours and see exactly what's happening. At the end, I'm really curious to see what the result is going to be. But I'll tell you exactly how long it took me and the temperature I used so that we know once and for all, you know, what's the story with this cooking length and temperature. Okay, so lead on in the oven and I'll show you the result when it's done. And here we are. So I've been cooking my meat here for two and a half hours at 170 degrees Celsius and it has been perfect. That temperature, look at my sauce here, it's got a nice and rich color and my meat is perfectly cooked. I was testing already just to see with my fork here, it totally falls off the bone and it's detaching. I've got no power on there and it's perfect. All what needs to happen now is to finish the fond braisage and which is that braising base here. So what we're going to do, I'm going to take this off, put them in a tray with a little bit of sauce, keep this warm in the oven and we're going to be reducing this to get the ultimate sauce. And there we are. So basically, as soon as your meat is cooked, you take the meat out, you put it in a tray like this in a little bit of sauce, as you can see, so it doesn't dry up. You put a foil on and I'm going to put this in the oven just to keep it warm. So 70 degrees Celsius. And while this is resting, we're going to make the sauce very quickly. And that's also an easy step. And now for the fond braisage, you're going to put your pan on here medium to high heat and all what we need to do is to reduce the sauce that we have here. That's it. Bring it to the boil and we're going to wait until it thickens and it's got a semi syrupy consistency. You can see now it's a little bit too liquid. So we're going to spend five or ten minutes doing this, then filter the little garnish out and we're done. We're going to have a beautiful sauce, but we'll still add a little final touch to it. It's been more than five minutes. I just turned the heat off so we don't have too much smoke so you can have a, a look. It's difficult to see anything in this pan. And look, my sauce now has got that nice kind of more of a syrupy. You see how it's less liquid? The most important, the back of a spoon like this. You can see that spoon coating consistency and a shine. That's all what we need. So now I'm going to filter this into another pan. Okay, so I'm going to be using my favorite pan, of course, the saucier pan. And what I'm going to do is filter everything in there. Now, one thing as well, you don't want 
to press down like this when, you, when you're doing this. And so very gently, very carefully, you go on the side like that to really kind of, you know, get all of the juices out. But you don't want to have a vegetable puree going through the sieve. And this is a fine mesh sieve, extremely important. And here we are. So I'm putting the heat back on. No whisk or anything. What we're going to do here is correct the seasoning and taste. There's enough salt. I'm going to add a bit of pepper in there. And because it's a port sauce, you always finish off with a dash, and so not even like a, a tablespoon of the original spirit used. Okay. And very gently, I'm going to mix the whole lot. Now, of course, to finish, as always, in French cooking, nudge of butter. So, can't do it at that. Heat to a minimum, even you can, I'll even turn it off because you don't want this to boil. And the butter, it is all about swirling the sauce like this. You see? That kind of back and forth motion with the pan that you can do. But that's it. And we are done. When the butter is gone, it's all melted, the sauce is ready. All right, so let's do a little bit of a, of a test. Huh? I've took one piece of the meat that was loose huh, out of the chanks there in the oven, and we've got all what we need. I've got a little bit of sauce here that we've just made, and some um, shredded lamb, so consistency of the sauce. Just to tell you and show you, see? It's a bit gravyish. Now it's called sometimes in the, in the translated book from Escoffier, actually brown sauce is even due, called gravy. Which is a bit amazing. Oh, look at that. It's a beautiful color. Uh, and let me. Smells great. Mm. That stuff is good. <laughs> the sauce is really sweet. But, like, the, you know, the port kind of sweet and it goes very well with the lamb. But I think, you know what? It is something you go you're going to need a mash with this. You're going to need a mash. A potato mash because this has to be drenched in sauce, you see. You don't want it to be dry. I can really see this from here. It's nice and moist, but the sauce, look at this. The sauce does everything. Mm. And here we are. So, of course, like I said, you can serve this absolutely with a mash, but we need to concentrate on the braising. Eh? So this is the result of a braised lamb shank. It's very easy. First, the searing. And then we've got this in the oven and we create how, so this is just the juices that I had in my tray. Okay, and I'm gonna put this so that you can really see uh, the whole thing, but I think the sauce is what is gonna make that dish. Okay, so I've got here, I would serve this with a little, you know, sauce boat and we're gonna just cover this in sauce. Okay, it is really, really all about that beautiful sauce. And let it stick, yeah? so it's sticky. And this is part of the braising. You could glaze this further in the oven. You can put that plate into the oven so it's gonna really caramelize a little bit the, the, the sauce on top. And for the final fragrance, you need a sprinkle of uh, chopped rosemary. Okay, that you're gonna put in the sauce. You're gonna put it over your meat and to really have this explosion of fresh rosemary, fresh flavors, that's gonna add that final, that final touch for your guest or anything like this. And of course, you, you always put a piece of, you know, what you've used for cooking as a, as a reminder, okay? That was like a rosemary base and port sauce, okay? But that's it. That's it for the plating. And that completes the video for this week. I hope you enjoy it. And as always, if you have any questions uh, regarding this or the, the cooking technique, the braising technique, just uh, feel free to ask this in the comment section. You can follow me if you want on Facebook, on Patreon. And thank you, by the way, to all the new patrons, all the new subscribers and the new students on the school. There's been plenty, plenty of people. And we were over 800 people now it's going crazy. So thank you very much. I really appreciate for all the effort we're putting on this channel and the school, etc. But that's it for me. I will see you all next week again for another French cooking video. See you all. Bye bye.